I'm going to turn the TV off for two hours in the evening, and I'm going to pray and study the Word of God. Or something like that. Whatever your resolution. But you know what? Most of the time, they, they don't really last. Do they? Mm -hmm. they might last a couple of days, or sometimes they don't even start. We don't even get to do it. <clears throat> but we look for changes that are going to be positive in our lives. And we are hopefully looking for the best new year we've ever seen in our lives. Amen. And you know what? You can look for that today. Don't let the devil steal that from you. You can look for that today if you're looking through Christ Amen. to change it for you. If you're looking for Jesus to come down and bless your soul. If you're looking for Jesus to give you the help. But you know what? If you're looking for man or you're looking for things, oh, if I only had this or if I only had that, you know what? They don't make you happy. No. But if you've got Jesus and put Him first, that's going to make you happy. <laughs> and you know what? Sometimes we've got to give something up to obtain Jesus. And, and I look at that and it's about Luke. In, in the book of Luke, it talks about the men that was fishing. And it said they pulled all night, didn't it? Amen. And the Lord says, Well, go out on my word. Go out and do this, what I said to do. And they said, Lord, no, I don't know how I want to, but I go up because of you. And so they went out there and started fishing. They caught a boatload of fish so much so that it was breaking their necks and their boat began to sink. And they had to call some other friends, partners, to come out there and get all the fish. And then some of the, the men that was fishing came out there and the Lord said, well, y'all just leave that. Mm -hmm. Hey, that was a lot of money. Yeah. That was a lot to leave, wasn't it? Yeah. But he said, I'll make you fishers of men. Mm -hmm. You know, this year, my prayer for you all is that uh, you not necessarily have all the riches that you're ever going to have. Uh -huh. That you don't win the lottery. <laughs> I mean, the lottery is ain't on you. But... Uh, <laughs> Not all that stuff, but I would wish that the Lord would just bless you Amen. and lead and direct you and that you would feel God's power more than you've ever felt it in your life. And sometimes that might mean leaving something behind to start the new day. Leaving something behind to start a new beginning. It talked about Moses and he got led the children out of bondage. It seemed like they complained about everything, didn't it? Yeah. And don't that sound like us sometimes? We complain about everything. You know, and I've heard it about church. Will the preacher preaches too long. He don't preach long enough. He preaches too loud. He's too soft. He didn't shake my hand. They sung too loud. The drums are too loud. The drums not loud enough. We don't want drums. We don't want guitar. We don't want this. We don't want that. And then all of a sudden, we're going around saying, boy, I've got a big old Christian life here. But the only thing we're trying to do is complain. But I've got news for you. These bodies will never be pleased until you let Jesus Christ do the pleasing. Amen. Amen. And you let Jesus Christ do what Jesus Christ needs to do. And I'll tell you what that is. Because the devil has got you and bound you up to long. He's making you believe this, making you believe that. You need to move the devil out of your life. You need to push him out and say, Devil, I'm tired of you getting in my life and messing around with it. And God, I want you number one. I want you to be the one that leads me. And I'm tired of letting Satan take me and, and just use me and twist me and do everything that he wants to do. We got to move him out. Right. Those men, they followed him, didn't they? They left all that and followed him. Right. Sometimes I wonder if we can leave a ball game long enough to follow. Him. Well, I better look at oh. <laughs> <laughs> I got to hit the switch. I talk about baseball. I talk about football. I talk about basketball. I talk about shopping. But sometimes I wonder if the Lord said, leave it, can we leave it? We better. Sometimes we don't realize how important Jesus is to us. Amen. But He should be the center of attention of all of us in this room. He should. And you know what? When hard preaching comes, instead of us getting mad and walking out the door and, and spitting it out, we need to swallow it. It might be bitter. But we need to swallow it and say, you know what? I need to move up a little bit. Amen. I need to move up just a little bit. I tell you what. If I ain't preaching on me, I sure ain't helping you. That's right. It takes faith to have a new beginning. 
Today you can have a new beginning. All of us could in here. See the children of Israel. Moses said to faith, this is God, and I'm going to talk to Pharaoh. And we're going to get out of here. But yet when they got out there, they seen, well, it ain't just as... But well, what got me? What did they have back there? Right. Right. You know, that's how we preach it. Right. And don't you even know that preachers now, there's one on TV the other day got on and said they was never in bondage. They were partners with the Jews. My goodness, people! Just to sell a book! What's wrong with us? We're crazy! They're crazy. They get away. If it's in a Bible, they don't want to preach it anymore. And I've got news for you. They was in bondage. It's just like hell. What do they say about Haiti? Oh, it was a dumping ground outside of Galilee or people of the cities. It was a dumping ground. That don't mean you're going to hell and burn. Oh, come to my church. We'll talk about things like that. We won't tell you that you'll burn rock and hell. Brother, know what you say. I say you'll split hell wide open. Amen. <laughs> I say you're going to go down there where it's hot and there's an action to see. I'm here to tell you. I'm not here to shirt coat it for you. But I'm here to tell you. You better get your life right. Amen. And you know what? You got a calling on it. You better get that right. Amen. And you know what? If God is, is messing with you and telling you you need to do something, you know what? You better do it. Why, right. brother, Lord? You're going to be miserable until you do it. That's right. Amen. Pick on me, you ought to be the happiest person in the world. What's that one guy say? Happy, happy, happy. Feel <laughs> happy, happy, happy. <laughs> Going to church makes me happy, happy, happy. Let me tell you something. Oh, we need to get a little bit more happy. We need to turn over and have a brand new day. And we need to push aside whatever our hindrance is on. What's your hindrance? Is it Jesus? Is Jesus in you? Mm-hmm. It ain't Jesus, is it? Mm-hmm. It ain't God, is it? No. What is it today? I got news for you. <laughs> it's the devil. Amen. And the devil wants you to quit. The devil don't want you sitting in here right. next year at 2013. Uh-uh. And I hate to say it, but I hope none of you all <coughs> fall back this year. But I'm here to tell you, everybody in this room, The devil is after every one of us. Mm-hmm. And he's ready to pull you right out. Oh, yeah. He's just looking for a willing vessel. Right. Well, I've had enough for him. Have y'all ever said that? I looked to the door so you won't look at it. Yeah. And we all said that. Lord, I just, I can't take no more. Yeah. And, and you know what it tells us in Corinthians? That there's an escape point. He won't put no more, no more on you than you can bear. Right. He can't. Oh, the devil will tell you. Well, no, no, Brother Doyle's wrong. No, I'm not. The Bible tells me that's the truth. He'll not put no more on you than you can bear. God is faithful to you. I'm preaching right at somebody. I love you. You need to let the Lord work in you. You need a new beginning. As a woman with the issue of blood, she tried everything. Tried it all. Have you ever just tried everything to see what doesn't work? Oh man, I've been there. And then I let God try. Amen. And God worked it out. Right. Now I got news flash for you. Sometimes it wasn't the way I wanted it to be worked out. Right. <laughs> Brother Noel, yeah. it wasn't the way I wanted it to work out. But God worked it out the way He wanted it worked out. Right. And you know what? We need to be praying for God's will. This woman with issue of blood patches, I can only touch the hem of this garment. We need to have that desire when we walk into the church house that if I could just touch the hem of His garment. Yeah. Every time we come to church, Instead of thinking about all the hassles and all the problems and all the cares that everybody's got to stand, we need to think to ourselves, if I could just touch the hem of his garment. What would happen, Brother Noel, if I could just touch the hem of his garment? You'll be made whole. You'll be made whole if you could just touch it. See, that's what starts our new day. That's what starts our new beginning. What is it? It's faith. It's faith in my Jesus Christ. It's faith in him. It's faith. That woman touched him. He felt virtue leave his body. Yet. He turned around and touched him. They said, Lord, look at all these people around here. You asking me who touched you? Of course, I felt something. Let me tell you something. 
You connect with God, God builds it for you. Amen. Amen. And then He sends it back. Let's get in tune with God. And don't let nothing become between us. Blind Bartimaeus, you know, I've been preaching on him a lot here lately. But he said, Hey, over here, over here, over here. Shut up. Be quiet. You hear the devil telling you that? Uh -huh. Shut up. Be quiet. You're not worthy. Have you ever heard that? I've heard it. That's the biggest thing the devil tell you. You're not worthy to go get prayer. Let me tell y'all. They like saying this, don't know why. But we got a lot of young men to start now preaching. And spouses, I'm going to tell y'all something. That's the biggest lie of the devil he'll do. You talk to people. <coughs> but the devil will tell you you're not worthy to be a preacher's wife. Mm -hmm. But the one thing, maybe y'all are struggling, I don't know what it is. But you know what? The devil's a lie. Amen. The devil's a lie. Amen. And you know what? You are worthy. But God just didn't call the man or the woman. But he called us to whoever's with him. Right. That was free. That wasn't in the note. You just say, I don't know. This is just Tracy and Leisha, but I don't know any of the new ones. But Regina over there. Regina's married into it. And Regina, you know no better than huh? Marrying the real preacher. I have to talk to Alfred the girl. <laughs> but you know, Canada is a preacher. Yep. God's cow is doing stuff. And I'm just going to preach today. The devil don't want you there. And the devil's going to tell you, oh, you're not worthy. You're... Why am I good? Yes, you are. <laughs> worthy is the Lamb. Amen. Because he died on that cross. We've got life, got more abundance. Brother Hector looked at me. Back in the, the 80s, 1983, when I was called to preach. And uh, he looked, and I told him I was called to preach. And Bro Hacker didn't say much. He said, Well, I don't think I'll stop being a big biblical thing. Well, I said, Well, okay. Uh, uh, what do I do now? I said, I got to preach a revival with Ray and I've been preaching a lot. And he said, uh, Preach the church. He says, good enough for Lord, I'll leave enough for you. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, well, he said, the one first one I preached up to me. He said, I preached to her. He said, you preached to me. He said, just preached to me. I got a little one. Wow. I was young and stupid. I'll be fine. He preached to her? You know. <laughs> well, I had five nights. I preached to her every night. <laughs> <laughs> we had about seven years later. Mm -hmm. That revival was a great one. <laughs> but you know what? It makes sense. Sometimes you gotta keep this simple, don't you? Amen. And call the devil a liar. Because that's what the devil is. Amen. And you know what? I just I said, thank the Lord. You just move on. And he told me he said, Ronnie, he said, the Lord didn't call you to be me. He said, Lord called you to be you. Right. And wives and and preachers and preachers the preachers. Ain't got to be anybody else. Right. He calls us to be us. Right, man. And and that's what's all about. Christians he calls you to be you. Right. Be a witness. Right. You can touch somebody's life out there. Mm -hmm. We can do that. Yeah. Through its work, through our school. Through whatever it is. We have a responsibility just to watch our life. We can start that. A new day right now. But Lord, I fail. You see, that's where the devil wants to bring up our past. Amen. And man, I say what? Everybody in here today has a past. Amen. All of us do. And sometimes it wasn't very good our past. Most of them wasn't. There's things in our lives that sure were changing. But God has forgiven us. Mercy. He stood as far as east is the west. And the devil may want to bring him up, but you know what? The devil's alive. He can't bring him up because God has forgiven him. He brought him up against Job and did everything. Look, oh, look at Job over there. You'll need this. You'll need this. But you know Plenty what? more preaching comes from Rudder Ronnie Doyle right after this commercial break.